Alrighty, guys, welcome to 20 Minutes with 2020 Mendocino, our weekly podcast segment every Sunday on YouTube at our new time, 4.20 p.m. Uh, I'm your host, Carlos, creative director over at 2020 Mendocino, uh, here joined by my our founder, Adam. Adam, how you doing? Good, good, Carlos, thanks. So we just had a brief conversation before we started recording. Um, and we're just really excited about some of the stuff that we have coming out. Um, part of our early October drop is the highly anticipated Avenue of the Giants. Um, and that's a three-way cross, great success times the Testarossa Sour Strawberry. Um, and it's, I know that we, we came up with the name Avenue of the Giants, not only as an homage to um, the beautiful trees at the, uh, the beautiful redwoods of the Emerald Triangle, but also to kind of highlight um, some of our friends in the Emerald Triangle as well, that being uh, Casey from Happy Day and Leo from Aficionado. So I know, Adam, that you've called great success probably your favorite strain in the terpene category. So um, can you tell us a little bit about that? I know we so spoke about it um, with, on, on the episode we have with Casey, but I want to hear your perspective on it again and also just – Talk about Avenue of the Giants in general, because I know it's one you're really excited about and we're really excited about. Yeah, yes. No, I am, I am, I'm very excited about the strain. So, um, and, and there's, it's, 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 uh, it's leaked out a little bit to the community here and there. So we're going to be getting some feedback from other folks as well, which I'm, I'm very confident will be uh, excited people just like me. So um, I can't wait. So yeah, I think I'm just going to go back to kind of the origins of this strain and and it's kind of a three-part way, three-part three parts and and I and I and again, yeah, the name the name Avenue of the Giants to to really go back to the to the beginning is uh this the this is a a famous highway that is in southern Humboldt County and um it's just this beautiful road that meanders through some of the most majestic trees in the world and through this just gorgeous, dank, earthy forest. Uh, and it's really something, uh, it's, a, it's just a, it's a very special place. And so um, I believe Carlos actually had the idea, like, yeah, we need to name, you know, this sometime when we come up with just the, 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 the best collaboration strain, it needs to be, we need to name something Avenue of the Giants. And so we knew when we, as soon as we started developing this strain, which was probably over a year, well over a, a couple years ago now at this point, that uh, this was going to be it. So um, yeah, it basically started with uh, one of, with, with our partner, Ryan, running into our, our friend Leo from Aficionado Seeds at, at, at the gas station in Laytonville. And they swapped a couple uh, handfuls of seeds and uh, Leo flung a couple bindles of seeds, you know, this little paper wrapped up, uh, <laughs> bindles with the with with some name scratched on them over and um, at some point we got them going and uh, really just fell in love with the terpenes on on one particular uh, that he had given us and it was uh he ended up finding out that it was uh testarossa one of his strains that he he later produced for uh for commercial uh seed production and um so we ended up crossing that with the with the sour strawberry, which was our really one of our other like just great Afghan dense Afghan super early finisher, uh, and after we made that strain, we we knew okay we've got the terpene bomb right here right now. What can we do to make this better? And there was the obvious option, and that was to go to to the great success and the great success just is in a world of its own um it again is yeah as you mentioned it's it, it it does to me in my opinion it doesn't really get much better than the great success um and so we made the first f1s of that of uh of the sour strawberry testarossa crossed it onto the great success and we did a pheno hunt and went through the arduous process of determining the winners. We ended up coming up with three. It was uh, the number 33, the number 12, and the number 25. So um, the 33 was really probably the ultimate winner. 
but um, the number 25 definitely took the looks category because she had this is like beautiful purple color and just super thick trichomes. But we're pretty that was me and Amy's favorite, favorite, correct? What's that? That was me and Amy's favorite, correct? Yeah, that exactly. So a couple of the team members picked 25. And then I think 33 was the overall and, and 12 was kind of just like probably second place in potency and smell, but uh, it's, you know, you know how that goes. Everyone has an opinion. Um, so uh, we picked the 33, 12 and the 25 and we ended up crossing them, uh, the, the 33 and the 12 together. And um, in the meantime, we've been running the, the clones from that original pheno hunt. So we've had ample time to, to really see the quality of these things. And it, it's really just, it's out of this world. I mean, it, I haven't seen much like this in my entire life. That it, it's, it's, it's definitely um, on, on, the, on, the, on the tip of the spear as far as quality goes. And this is, I'm talking about potency and and just overall insane terpenes. So um, I, I highly recommend that people try to get a hold of this. This is this, we don't have a lot of these seeds. We didn't do a huge run of it. We can certainly remake them. Um, we have the clones. We still have the original clone stock, the 33, 12 and 25. Um, and we are planning on using them again, but the, the current drop release that we have is pretty small. So I recommend that if, people get a chance they need to jump on these it's, it's, it's going to be they're, they're very special so um and the smell i mean i i, I spent a long time trying to do the write-up on this strain and it was really hard because i could not pinpoint a particular smell out of it uh, and, and what i ended up deciding is that it's like it, I, the, the word fuel and gas kept coming in my mind but i'm like this is beyond fuel and gas this hurts the back of your nose. And, and my wife mentioned, she took a whiff of it and she's like, God, it reminds me of ammonia. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. It's like, and it doesn't smell like piss ammonia, but it burns the back of your head like ammonia does. Like those, in fact, she didn't say ammonia. She said those little things that you break the, I think they're called like sniffing salts or something like that. The things that wake you up when you're knocked out or, um, <laughs> The, I don't know if anyone's, if you guys are familiar with those, but a little glass capsules that you break and smell, and they basically like blast your nostrils out, your your uh, your sinuses out. Well, that's pretty much what this does, and and it was the best analogy I could come up with. So, besides like this kind of heavy, uh, spicy smell of of uh, like. Uh, Kind of like anise in a way but not quite uh, more like root beer like sassafras root beer and then just and then rotten grapes because that comes from the great success that's like really heavy just grape smell and then and then that just burn your nose back your nose uh, ammonia smell so um, i know i've rambled about this strain quite a bit but yeah i recommend this is this is this is a winner in in almost every category so people shouldn't right. sleep on this one yeah, no, definitely. Um, some some of the uh, the better tasting weed that we've ever put out for sure, and that brings me to something that you know what I'll just say it out. I'll, I'll just say it now. We're we're not sure if we're gonna release this around the time of Avenue of the Giants or not, but we're thinking we should, right? Well, I think we can make it official now and just say that we're going to. <laughs> okay. Because uh, the cat kind of came out of the bag when we when we uh, started mentioning it earlier today to some of our vendors so uh, yes that's, yeah that's gonna be a girl crush guys and girl crushes but got biscotti times bad girl so we reversed our bad girl cut our badass 30 percent bad girl cut onto biscotti now adam tell me what that has yielded for us and i pun intended on that <laughs> so we have had just really good results with using this one cut of biscotti that we have that came from our friends at, at, um, at Humboldt Sacred Roots uh, up, up in Arcata. And we, we, this is where the whip came from as well, the same cut. And- um, You mean the spice? Really? What's that? You mean the spice? I'm sorry, yeah, the spice. 
this is where yeah, this is where the spice came from. And what we really have our intentions on this one was to 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 take the, what we our same intentions with with the spice were to take this biscotti cut and kind of bring it up to a a level of of being more um, uh, viable for commercial production and just viable for general growing and just the bag appeal to just bring all those categories up a notch and we really hit it out of the park with girl, with girl crush so this is really the first heavy fuel gas strain besides sour diesel which we love and have been had huge affinity to forever that we actually see as like this very viable commercial strain there's a few cushions out there but a lot of times they end up losing the nose and they just don't quite have like that real strong gas punch so girl crush it's just off the hook i mean it is just solid fuel licorice kerosene fennel um it's you know it's got the spice very you know it's just, it's related to the spice it's it's similar um it's but it it also what i noticed about it which really i didn't notice until today is that it's really skunky as well um i ended up um with a bag in my backpack like hauling it around for a few days and every time i got in my truck it like smelled like a skunk in there and and i realized it was that bag so it's kind of cool it's got that old school skunk smell too uh but the production capabilities of the strain are are fabulous i mean it's the, the what she gets from the bad girl it's just just chunky heavy nugs she holds up her weight really well um really fast growing and as soon as we tested it for the second time the first test was pretty small the second was larger we all unanimously said we're going to do a huge pheno hunt of this strain so that tells you what we're what we think about the strain because our our production end of it is is already saying like this strain is 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 fits the category for us to be able to to put into into full production and 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 be very viable so um and again you don't find that a lot with the heavy heavy gas so so just to give the people an example man what what were those numbers looking like in those uh, what was it two gallon pots yeah so we had we had like 650 gram wet plant uh, wet <laughs> plants um with being on uh, on metric we have to weigh everything wet so it's been kind of nice it, it's a pain in the butt but we really get a lot of metrics from it so as we're harvesting we're always weighing everything so um yeah we were getting basically small pots two two gallon pots not plants were not veg that long they were pretty small just maybe a, a foot and a half tall and just like not not even nearly like a pinky size stock maybe like a, a pencil when we switched them over and and yeah they were the, the wet plants were like 600 grams which we can assume is probably around 75 grams dried uh but you know these were packed tight together and this was in eight weeks so the numbers were good the 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 amount of um of byproduct is really low just like bad girl so it looks a lot like bad girl but it's got the thick the really thick frost rails so a couple of the phenos were were purple had the nice pretty purple hues not like full purple um and it's just fitting every every category that we really look for 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 commercial production so right on man so can't say enough about it this next drop is going to be fabulous with both the, with the girl crush and the avenue of the giants and the whistling moon traveler so yeah and that's just in time it's our it's our harvest or i mean are we doing are we still doing a harvest moon drop i don't know if that's tentatively we're pushing there. for that it's it's we're pushing the the envelope here with getting it out by uh october 1st i know we had made kind of a somewhat official announcement that it was going to be october 1st if i would say we're we're going to it's definitely going to be the first couple of weeks of October at this point. Right on. So it'll be just in time for you guys uh, post harvest. So you guys can start thinking about your uh, fall and winter projects for sure. Uh, definitely look 2020s way. We got some really nice stuff uh, headed your guys' way for sure. Um, I guess we can highlight one final strain. Um, and just a heads up guys, please send in all your questions. 
Uh, we're going back to growth centric episodes after this, answering your questions and definitely covering some uh, STS topics for sure. But I want to highlight a future release, um, definitely in the future, though near future. However, if you do want to get your hands on the first bit of these, um, head over to Neptune Seed Bank. And what was that, our last drop? They, uh, they can get these? Yes, that was the Spice drop. Yeah, so the Spice and Durbanberry King Band drop um, will come with a strain that we named after our company in Roman numerals, MMXX or uh, 2020. Um, and we took Sour Snow and The Whip, two strains that we've released crosses of, but never in their pure form. We took two strains that uh, really are, are, are the essence of 2020 and smacked them together. Adam, can you, can you go into that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I just uh, did a write up on this. But the, yeah, the MMXX, is really just a, a it's two it's two of our uh, our 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 winning our winning cuts that we've never actually released in 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 seed form crossed together and it's not the first time we've actually crossed that strain together we just never had made a name for it and never released them so uh, after doing multiple pheno hunts over many years of both of those strains and and selectively breeding them and back crossing them for countless times we you know we're kind of running with the cut for a while and then we'll we'll find end up it'll it'll just fade out because of uh pathogens or we'll just decide to kind of jump it up a notch and then we'll we'll back cross and then and then and then choose another winner and just kind of keep going from there so um yeah the mmxx i mean it was everything we could have expected and more i mean it, it was just the super frost bomb um i don't think we have any lab test results from it yet but it pretty much guaranteed it's going to be in the high 20s uh the both the sour snow and whip are in those in the, that type of category um and it was surprisingly huge i mean neither neither of those strains are giant but i know carlos you got to see those before you the whip is, and, and the whip itself is is definitely smaller than 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 the sour snow but together they were beast mode and probably some of the stickiest weed we've come across yeah, it was ultra, ultra sticky, just insane, almost like just, just uh, like annoyingly, <laughs> annoyingly sticky. You know, it's just it got you like gooey just just being near it. So yeah, it, it's a. Uh, it really was the size was the one thing that surprised me. It was like, and it was like almost every pheno too. It wasn't. It wasn't just just we had one big one. It was like all it of stood, them. It stood in the gone. same ballpark as those Durban crosses and those trainer crosses. Yeah, but but more but much more of a short like Afghan looking. Yeah, it, same ballpark, but a whole different beast for sure. This this was like the gigantic, frosty Afghan looking buds, you know, with stacked. Yeah, these, stacked. these weren't these but, weren't soda can as far as as far as lengthwise, but they were definitely softballs. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you saw them. It was it was really quite. We were blown away. But I was really totally that. It's, it surprised me more than anything was just seeing how big, how aggressive and big they got. But yeah, they weren't they weren't super stretchers or really tall. And that's classic with the the whip and the Afghans. You know, they'll steal the they'll steal the height pretty quick from from even a, a fairly fast growing plant like sour snow. But sour, sour snow has just been this just fabulous outdoor strain forever. It's super early like never molds everything else will be rotting off the stock and sour snow will just be like hanging in there finishing up in in early october well which is really what we shoot for it's pretty tough to find something that finishes much before that uh at least you know com at least at our latitudes uh but yeah that the the mmxx i mean it's uh it it's it's everything we could have hoped for and i don't think we really would have expected anything but that was just just because we took our two stickiest uh, best outdoor strains really and crossed them together so yeah so just a reminder that's the only way to get your hands on that strain now before the end of the year which is probably when we'll release it is by picking up our last drop uh over at neptune seed bank so i suggest you guys definitely check that out uh besides that adam i think uh we're almost there is there anything else you'd like to uh tell the people 
I no, I mean again, I look forward to the next uh next few episodes where we get back to just talking about growing and I know we get, we get a lot of questions and I've been compiling a lot of the good, really good questions we get from people and so I think it'd be fun to just just uh start doing some of these these uh um questions about reversing plants and just general breeding stuff too. A lot of people really have a, have quite a few questions and at some point let's try to do like more of a lifestyle one where we can we can field field stuff from people directly on the spot and and um do that that type of platform well let's take so. a let's take a temperature check on that guys if you want a live episode from us please comment down below that you want a live episode and we will do one and we'll field questions from you live on an upcoming episode i know we definitely have as he mentioned, an STS centric episode, some breeding centric episodes, and definitely an IPM one on the way. Is that correct? Yes. Right on. So make sure you guys uh, are subscribed to our YouTube page. Uh, once again, sign up for our mail list. We have an amazing rendition of Free the Seeds coming up this year, and that's all I'll say. Um, and then just send us questions on all platforms. Um, it's been a great episode. Thank you, Adam. Uh, once again, I'm Carlos. Give us a follow on 2020 Men at 2020 Mendocino at 2020 Oklahoma and our newest page at 2020 Autoflowers. Those will be coming out very soon. And always check out our website for all strain information. That's www.2020mendocino.com. Adam, any final words? Nah, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. And yeah, shoot us questions, and we'll try to field through uh, field through questions as well. So we we keep track of them and try to try to keep the, the good the really good questions i usually still answer people's emails if i can or or whatnot but certainly we try to field the good ones and if you have some shoot them our way and we'll try to we'll try to get them into these these podcasts because it always it brings it brings really good ideas to us so i just want to let everybody know too that um if you're in oklahoma there are tons of 2020 flower dropping on all the shelves across oklahoma city and tulsa right now some really good numbers out there. Some really nice looking weed. I just want everybody to go check that out. So give a follow to the at 2020 Oklahoma page. We'll be doing some features on all that stuff here very soon. But with that, that's the episode, guys. See you next time. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.